everybody. Question for you. Uh, have you ever tried to build something and the directions want you to measure out your pieces before you begin to cut? Well, guess what? I'm here today to teach you how to actually measure. All right. Uh, a few things we need to know about a ruler before we can actually learn to read it is, you know, there's a couple different sides to it. One side we have right here, this is our standard side, okay, also known as inches. Then we also have our other side that has smaller numbers on it and smaller little tick marks in between, and that is referred to as the metric side, or those are our centimeters. What we're going to be doing today is I'm going to teach you how to read to the nearest sixteenth of an inch. Well, what is a sixteenth of an inch? If you take a look between the inches, you will find these little tick marks, and you should count those before you start to read a ruler. Some rulers come with sixteen, some come with eight, some come with four. It all depends on how precise you want to measure. Most rulers come with 16 tick marks in between. Some come with 8, but most common is the 16. Uh, you can also tell by the size of the tick marks here, which would be different measurements. The longest one is going to be a half inch. These second longest ones, those are going to be the fourth inches. The next size would be our eighths, and then our little ones right down there are our sixteenths. So if I zoom in on one of the inches, we should be able to count, or we should be able to read and see that there's 16 lines in between our inch. So from our start point to here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and that takes us to our next inch. All right, so that's how we can tell how many units we will be dealing with. Another thing we want to realize about rulers is they don't always start at the end of the ruler. Looking at this one, you'll see there's a long line right there. This is a wooden ruler, and most wooden rulers don't start at the end because over time they begin to wear down or they chip or they break. Um, so you want to always be aware of where your zero mark is or where your starting point is on your ruler. Now, with our tick marks that we have in between here, it's simple. We just find how many inches we've passed when we're measuring an item, and then whatever, however many tick marks you have would be on the bottom of a fraction that comes after the number. Whatever the line lands on or whatever we're measuring would be our top number. So let's take a, do a couple examples here. All right, I have some lines here that I need to measure out, and it's simply I'm just going to start my ruler my zero mark on the line, and I'm going to line up my ruler with the other end of the line. Looking at how many inches I've passed, I'm going to mark down two inches. I know that there are 16 tick marks, so I can place that right on the bottom. And now I'm simply just going to count my lines. And I'm going to, from my start, I don't want to count the inch, I just start right here. I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I am at 12 marks, okay? Looking at that, I can tell that my top number is even and my bottom number is even, so that means that it can be reduced. So I simply need to say how many times will 2 go into 12? Doing some simple math, I know that it is 6, and 2 goes into 16 8 times. Again, looking at this, they are both even. Your fractions can be reduced as long as both numbers are even. Once our top number of the fraction is an odd number, it does not need to be reduced any further. So looking at this, they're both even. 2 goes into 6 three times. 2 goes into 8 four times. So my answer is finished. So for this line, it's going to be 2 and 3 fourths of an inch. Now notice I place these little marks after I write my numbers. Those are the symbol for inches. All right. If it was just one mark, then we would have, uh, it would equal feet. So let's go ahead and try another one. I'll zoom in a little bit to see if you guys can get a better view of this. All right. I'm going to line my ruler up with my start. I'm going to see how many inches did I pass. I passed one inch. I know it's going to be over 16 because there's 16 tick marks on here. And now I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 over 16. Looking at this, is that my final answer? No, it's not the final answer. Well, why isn't it the final answer? It's not because 
6 and 16 are both even, I can reduce them. Th or 2 goes into 6 how many times? That's correct, 3 times. 2 goes into 16 how many times? 8 times. Okay, looking at this, is this an odd number on the top? I hope you said yes, because it is. So this is going to be my final answer. The answer for this line is 1 and 3 eighths. Now remember, we always want to reduce our fractions until they are in their simplest term. The last two lines, if I take a look here, I line up my 0, and then I have my 1 inch. So I'm passing 1 inch. I put it over 16, and I only went one past that. My top number is odd. My bottom number is even, so I finished. Go ahead, last one. Taking a look here. If you want, you can pause this and try and figure out what it is on your own. Give it one moment. All right, here we go. How many inches did I pass? Three. I'm going to put three there. Place a 16 on the bottom because I've I have 16 units in between that one inch, and then I'm going to count. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine inches. And there's an odd number on the top, even on the bottom. That would be my final answer for that measurement. If you're not understanding this, you might want to come and see me, and we can do some one-on-one -on -one work. Hope you enjoyed and learned how to read a ruler today. Have a good one.